we're here with the amazing Elisa Port, who's the director of the Duban Breast Centre at Mount Sinai Hospital. She has written a book called The New Generation Breast Cancer Book, which actually tells people to remain optimistic when they have a diagnosis. So, Elisa, tell us a little bit about why you wrote this book and who it's aimed at. Um, first of all, thank you for having me and um, letting me speak about this. I wrote this book um, based on, not because I wanted to just write a book, but it was really based on what I felt was a need for a specific kind of book that I, I didn't have and I wanted for my patients. Um, women every day are diagnosed with breast cancer and everyone tells women who are diagnosed, Sonia, get information, get information. But in today's day and age, the problem is really not lack of information it's actually too much information and no filter. So while getting information is supposed to be empowering, I found it was having the opposite effect. And women were coming into my office totally overwhelmed with all of the information that was out there. Um, you know, if you Google breast cancer, there's literally like eight million pages that will come up in your browser and what's a woman to do in terms of sorting through that. So um, the purpose of the book was really, I, I felt like, there was a need for a new kind of book to help a woman who's diagnosed with breast cancer sort of navigate that path um, in the age of information overload and, um, and to remain optimistic because the survival rates today are so much better than ever before. You and our mutual best friend, I'll share her with you, you've kind of taken her over <laughs> since you've opened the Dubin Breast Centre, but Eva Dubin yes. started this, this centre, why? Yeah, so in fairness, she, it was her vision, and, and she started it and has brought me graciously along for the ride. Um, but when I got here, I, you know, I'd like to think that we have this incredibly synergistic relationship, and we've kind of taken it to a level that I, I don't think would ever have been possible for either of us alone. And um, what I think the center does, which is very unique, is it provides breast cancer care is very complicated. There are different aspects to it um, that people don't even realize. A single woman could need a surgeon, an oncologist, a radiation doctor, a genetics doctor, a plastic surgeon. And navigating and putting together that whole package of doctors for one individual woman can be very hard for her when she's in the throes of a diagnosis. And so opening up a comprehensive center where you get all of your care under one roof, I think, uh, is a tremendous service to women. Um, and not that there aren't other centers like that, but I think what we also do differently is have created a very patient-centered environment where it's really all about the patient here and accommodating the patient and providing other services as well that I think are incredibly important part of the whole experience. Um, the massage, the creating a calming and caring aesthetic environment. and. Um, and just the, the level of the staff here and how they treat patients, they're all very specially trained. So I think that that's the uniqueness of what we do. And it seems like your whole ethos here mm -hmm. is about mind, body, spirit. Sure. So it's not just about, okay, you've got breast cancer, yes. I'm gonna cut it out and, 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 and go on the conveyor belt. It, right. Every person I've talked to, from your patients to anybody involved here who's come for care, mm. has said, they listen to me. Yeah. From the receptionist mm -hmm. to somebody massaging them. Mm -hmm. And how is that different from what is out in, in most of America today? Yeah. I mean, first of all, of course, it's extre extremely gratifying to hear that because that's, of course, one of our priorities. So to find out that patients are actually, um, that our vision has become a reality is, of course, so gratifying to hear. Um, I do think, and you know, I think in some ways the book and the center and our mission here completely dovetail in that respect. And in that, um, it's all about creating a calming, caring environment to make the experience of breast cancer, which, let's be honest, can be one of the most traumatic things to happen to a woman, a little bit more easy, a little bit easier for her to travel that path. So whether it's t telling her, you know, 
tune out the background noise of all of these people coming at you with all of these different suggestions. Um, you know, for a woman who's having a lumpectomy, having friends say, you shouldn't be having a lumpectomy, have a mastectomy, or you should see my doctor, or you should try this treatment, or you should try that treatment. It's all treatment. noise. It's background noise yeah. that people don't realize we've gotten so sophisticated in our breast cancer care, there is no one size fits all. So for a woman to have breast cancer and to have her friend, even a friend who seems to have the exact same thing, be kind of you know, providing that background noise in her ear is not always helpful. And I'm hoping that this will try to allow women to navigate that path and tune out that noise. And I think that's what we do here in the center. We've, hear, we've heard many patients come through the door and say, you know, the minute I walk through here, the doors, I feel like I'm going to be taken care of. Uh, a calm, a sense of calm comes over me. I, I, don't, I don't think that's very common um, for places that take care of cancer to convey that level of caring and that, that kind of humane sense of total mind, body, spirit um, togetherness and that, that we're not just here to, like we were talking about, pass you on the conveyor belt of care and then you know spit you out on the other side um, to live the rest of your life. It affects people deeply before, during, and after.